Let's get right into it. Number 5. Your brain makes up reality. You like to think you're seeing the world as it is. Solid, reliable, objective, cute idea. In reality, your brain is basically running a live fan fiction of existence and calling it perception. Here's the uncomfortable science part. Your eyes don't actually see objects. They detect light. That light gets converted into electrical signals, sent to your brain, and then your brain guesses what's out there based on past experiences, expectations, and vibes. And it does this so fast you never notice the guessing part, you just feel like you're looking. This is why optical illusions work, not because your eyes are broken, but because your brain is lazy. It sees patterns where none exist, fills in gaps that aren't there, and smooths over reality like it's applying a beauty filter to the universe. Blind spots? You have one in each eye, and your brain just paints over them like a bad landlord fixing a hole with cardboard. Ever wonder why you don't notice your nose all the time? It's literally in your field of vision. Your brain just edits it out. Same thing happens with constant sounds, smells, and even pain. Your brain decides what's worth your attention, and everything else gets shoved into the background like an unpaid extra. The wild part is that two people can look at the exact same situation and genuinely experience different realities. Not opinions, not interpretations, actual perception. Different colors, different emotional weight, different facts. That's not philosophy. That's neuroscience. So when you confidently say, I saw it with my own eyes, what you really mean is, my brain made its best guess and I trusted it without checking the source. Basically, your brain isn't a window to reality. It's a Photoshop intern working under pressure. Number four, you're not as in control as you think. You feel like you decide things. You weigh options. You choose. You act. Congratulations. Your brain lets you believe that because it keeps you calm. Science, however, has receipts. Experiments have shown that your brain often makes decisions seconds before you're consciously aware of them. Your body commits first. Your awareness shows up late like, oh yeah, that was totally my idea. In famous studies, researchers could predict which button someone would press before the person knew they'd decided, not guessed, predicted. Your neurons fired, the decision was locked in, and then your conscious mind took credit like a manager who didn't do the work. This explains why you sometimes do something and immediately go, why did I do that? because the explanation comes after the action. Your conscious mind is more of a narrator than a driver. It tells a very convincing story about choices your brain already made backstage. This also explains habits, impulses, and why willpower feels like trying to wrestle a raccoon. Your brain prioritizes efficiency, survival, and reward, not your long-term goals. So when you grab your phone for no reason, eat the snack you promised you wouldn't, or procrastinate like it's an Olympic sport, that's not a moral failure. That's your brain doing what it evolved to do. Seek comfort and avoid effort. Free will isn't fake. It's just not as powerful as you were led to believe. You're less a CEO and more a spokesperson. Basically, your brain hits send and your consciousness says, yes, I meant to do that. Number three, your memories are mostly fake. You trust your memories, childhood moments, embarrassing stories, that one argument where you were definitely right. Sorry to break it to you, but your memory is less like a video recording and more like a Wikipedia page that anyone can edit especially you. Every time you remember something, your brain doesn't pull up a clean original file. It rebuilds the memory from scattered pieces. And while it's rebuilding, it casually adds details, removes others, and smooths over contradictions. Not maliciously, just creatively. This is why eyewitness testimony is so unreliable. Two people can watch the same event and later swear under oath that different things happened. Not lying, not confused. Their brain simply filled in different blanks. Stress makes this worse. Confidence makes it worse and repetition makes it way worse. Ever notice how the more you tell a story, the more dramatic it gets? That's not you exaggerating on purpose. Each retelling slightly rewrites the memory, and the new version replaces the old one. Over time, you're no longer remembering the event. You're remembering the last time you told the story. Even your strongest memories aren't safe. That core childhood memory you swear defines you? It's been edited dozens of times. Emotional tone changes, faces blur, timelines shift, your brain prioritizes meaning over accuracy because meaning is more useful for survival than factual precision. This also explains why arguments about the past are so intense. Both people are 100% convinced they're right, because both are experiencing a memory that feels real. Your brain doesn't label memories as possibly fictional. It just hands them to you with confidence. Basically, your brain is a nostalgic novelist, not a historian. Number two, your body lies about danger. Your anxiety doesn't care if you're actually in danger. It cares if something feels like danger. That distinction ruins a lot of lives. From a biological standpoint, your nervous system is stuck using ancient software. It evolved to keep you alive on the savanna, not to handle emails, social expectations, or public speaking. So when your heart races before a presentation, your body isn't being dramatic. It genuinely thinks you might die. Sweaty palms? 
predator preparation, shaky voice, adrenaline, tight chest, oxygen redistribution. Your body is doing exactly what it's supposed to do if you're about to be chased by something with teeth. The problem is, there is no lion. There's just a meeting. The wild part is that your body reacts before your brain finishes assessing the situation. Sensory input goes straight to the fear center first, because speed matters more than accuracy in survival. By the time your rational mind goes, wait, this is fine, your nervous system has already pulled the fire alarm and locked the doors. This is why telling someone to just calm down is useless. You can't logic your way out of a physiological response that started without logic. Your body isn't asking for reassurance. It's already halfway into battle mode. Anxiety isn't weakness. It's overprotection. Your body loves you too much and panics easily. Basically, your nervous system is a smoke detector that goes off when you make toast. Number 1. Your brain hates nothing more than silence. You'd think your brain would enjoy peace and quiet, no noise, no input, just calm. Absolutely not. Your brain treats silence like a software crash. When there's no stimulation, your brain doesn't relax. It panics. It starts generating thoughts, memories, songs, fake problems, and random embarrassing moments from 2009. This isn't because you're broken. It's because your brain evolved to always be scanning for something. No input feels like danger. That's why boredom feels physically uncomfortable. Your brain would rather replay cringe moments, create imaginary arguments, or invent worst-case scenarios than sit in nothingness. Empty space gets filled fast, and not with anything helpful. This also explains phantom vibrations, when you feel your phone buzz even though it didn't. Same with hearing your name in a crowd or seeing movement out of the corner of your eye. Your brain would rather hallucinate than miss something important. Studies have even shown that people will choose mild electric shocks over sitting alone with their thoughts. Not because they love pain, but because the brain considers something better than nothing. Silence removes distraction. And distraction is your brain's favorite coping mechanism. Meditation works not because it silences the mind instantly, but because it teaches you to stop reacting to the noise your brain creates when there's nothing else to do. You're not emptying your mind, you're learning not to argue with it. Basically, your brain is a toddler in a quiet room, and it will start knocking things over if you don't give it something to do. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.